Hi, this is Ms. Bitsmars, and this video is about conservation of energy. Um, so by the end of this video, you should know how to set up and solve conservation of energy problems. You'll see one example, and then I'm going to have you try one example. Okay, so first, what does conservation of energy mean? Um, just like in momentum, conservation means the total amount of stays the same. So conservation of energy means the total energy stays the same. Okay, or sigma e naught, all of the energy at the beginning. is equal to sigma e. So all the energy at the beginning equals all the energy at the end. Okay, so when you're solving conservation of moment energy problems, the steps are basically the same as when you're solving conservation of momentum problems. So first you're always going to draw a before and after picture. So before the event happens and after. Okay, second, instead of labeling your masses and velocity velocities, you're going to identify the types of energy present before and after. Okay, then you're going to use sigma e naught equals sigma e to set energy before equal to energy afterwards. Okay, you're going to then fill in the equations for the individual types of energy so like kinetic energy is one half mv squared and then finally plug in numbers and solve Alright, so the example that I'm going to do for you is on page 7 of your energy packet, um, problem number 1. It says, an 8 kilogram flower pot falls from a window ledge 12 meters above the sidewalk. A, what is its kinetic energy right before it hits the ground? And B, determine its velocity right before it hits. Okay, so we did this in class. The before picture is just this flower pot. Okay, we know that its velocity is zero because it hasn't fallen yet, and that its height is equal to 12 meters. Afterwards is right before this flower pot hits the ground. Okay, so the flower pot is moving at some speed. Okay, but its height is basically zero. It's about to hit the ground. Okay. And if I look at my before picture, I see that I only have gravitational potential energy. So I have UG, and at the end, I have only kinetic energy. Okay, so I'm going to write out sigma E naught equals sigma E 
okay? All the energy I have at the beginning is just UG. All of the energy I have at the end is K. Okay, now I know the equation for UG naught is equal to MGH. And in part A, I just want to know what is the kinetic energy. So for part A, all I have to do is I can solve for K. Okay, and I can plug in my mass, which is 8, G is 10, and H naught is 12. And that will be my kinetic energy. Okay, and when I multiply that all out, I get K is equal to 960 joules. Okay, now in part B, it wants to know the velocity. And since I know the kinetic energy, I can use K equals 1 half mv squared. Okay, so I plug in 960 for K. 1 half the mass is still 8 kilograms, and I'm solving for velocity. Okay, I know that 1 half times 8 gives me 4. I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 4, and I end up with v squared is equal to 24, or 240. All right, so my last step is to take the square root of both sides. Okay, these two cancel out, and I get my velocity is about 15.5 meters per second. All right, so the one I want you to try by yourself is page 8, number 4. Okay, remember the first thing you want to do is draw a before and after picture. So why don't you draw a before and after picture and then check back. Alright, so this problem says a bow with a spring constant of 300 newtons per meter is stretched back 30 centimeters. How fast will an arrow be shot if it has a mass of 300 grams? Okay, so in this situation we have a bow, okay, and initially it's stretched back, okay? And then we want to know how fast will the arrow be leaving the bow? So at the end, there's no stretch back, and the arrow is moving, okay? So at the beginning, the arrow is not moving, the bow is stretched back. At the end, there's no more stretch, but the arrow is moving, Okay, and so we have our before and after picture, and hopefully you have gone through and you've listed the types of energy. So if you haven't done that already, do that now. And you should realize because we have this thing that's stretched back, that we have spring potential at the beginning. Okay, so we have US naught. At the end, there's no more stretch, so there's no spring potential, and we have kinetic energy, okay? So I have US naught is equal to K, okay? Between these two pictures, our height doesn't change, so we might as well say that this is height equals to zero, and there's never gravitational, okay? So we have sigma E naught equals sigma e, okay, and that's really all of the energy at the beginning, which is only us naught, is equal to all the energy at the end, which is kinetic. Okay, we want to know how fast the arrow will be shot, so we're looking for velocity. Okay, now we can fill in our equations for our energies. We know that in general us is equal to one-half k delta x squared, we know that K is one-half mv squared. And so we write one-half K delta x squared equals one-half mv squared. Okay, I can divide both, both sides by one-half. And so I can cancel out my one-halves. And I want to get V by itself, so it can also divide both sides by M. 
Okay, now these m's cancel out, and I'm left with v squared is equal to k delta x squared divided by m. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a square root of both sides, okay, and I end up with v is equal to the square root of k delta x squared divided by m. I know that my spring constant is 300, so that's my little k. Remember, this little k is spring constant. Okay, big K is kinetic energy. And so we have square root of 300. It's pulled back 30 centimeters, which is 0.3 meters. So times 0.3 squared divided by the mass, which is 300 grams. And 300 grams is equal to 0.3 kilograms. Because remember, going from grams to kilograms, you divide by a thousand. Okay, so I have 300 times 0.3 squared divided by, and you can cancel out this 3 squared with the 0.3 on the bottom. Okay, so we have 300 times 0.3, which will be 90, and you're taking the square root of that, and you get velocity is equal to 9.5 meters per second. Okay, so over the next couple days we'll be doing a lot of these problems. Once again, the main idea is that first you, or the main idea is that energy stays the same. So you draw your before and after picture, you fill in the types of energy present in each of your situations. You fill in the individual equations for the types of energy, and then you plug in your numbers at the very end to solve.